something that you just been dying to say In 2016, I decided to publicly identify myself as a victim of Larry Nassar. Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lindsay, and if you are not new here, thank you so much for coming back. Today's video is going to be episode 4 in the Survivor Series, and it is going to be, again, divided up into two parts. I'm really sorry, but my document that I'm looking at is seven pages long just on what I'm going to be talking about, so I'm going to have to separate it into two just so it's not forever and a day long. But this video is going to be all about triggers when dealing with abuse. I believe that triggers when dealing with abuse, it's not just sexual abuse, I believe it's domestic, emotional, verbal, any type of abuse I think triggers really, really affect people. Part one of this video is going to be my personal triggers, mental health effects, and dealing with people in public, and triggers in public. And then part two is going to be dealing with the opinions of others about your abuse, and then advice that I would give to people about their triggers. Because this video is about triggers, I am probably going to say something or talk about something that may trigger you. I just want to give you a heads up on that. Also, these are just my opinions on what has worked for me. I know that everybody is different. Everybody experiences abuse differently. I know I keep saying that. And that is really, really important in this video because people have given me advice that hasn't worked. I've given advice to people that hasn't worked. But that doesn't mean that it's bad advice because that advice that didn't work in return helped me realize what does work. I just really want this video to extend out to all types of abuse because likely when you experience one type of abuse, it's not just one. You're experiencing many different ones whether you realize it or not. So if you are in a domestic violent relationship, I believe that you are also experiencing probably verbal abuse, emotional abuse, things like that. It's not just one type. There are often multiple types that go along with it. So I believe that this video is going to be relatable for a lot of people, whether it's just emotional abuse, whether it's physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, anything. So with that being said, I just, I really want this video to extend out to a wide variety of people. I know that I've mostly, mostly been focusing on sexual abuse, but I believe that this video really has the power to extend out to a ton of people. The last thing that I want to say before I really get started is that triggers are what makes it hard to heal from trauma. And it is often what causes you to regress in your path of healing as opposed to progressing. So I know in my, in my own experience, when I deal with triggers, that's what causes me to have a really bad day or a bad few days or a bad week or a bad month. And then I won't really have to deal with any triggers and I'll have a really great week or a great day or it just varies a lot. And if triggers weren't a thing, healing from trauma would be so much easier because it would be a nice consistent path. But triggers make it so you have one day that's really up, one day that's really down. It's like a roller coaster. So I do think that this is going to be one of the most important videos I do. So first... I just think what I'm going to do is go through and answer all of the questions that you guys have for me because triggers is a topic that you could literally talk about for a week straight and don't have that amount of time. So I'm just going to go through the questions that you guys asked me and again I separated them into different topics. So the first section is going to be dealing with my triggers personally and the first question right away was what triggers you and how do you deal with it? The very first thing is older adults that I don't know that are strangers that come up to me and try to have conversations with me. Usually it's older gentlemen and I don't mean that in like a rude way or anything but Larry was a, a male so I just think that because he was a male that's just what triggers me more than a female. Another thing about older adults is always wanting to know what their inner motive is when they're talking to me or when they're being kind or anything like that because Larry was always very nice and very caring but he was nice to use me for his own pleasure. So when other people are nice to me, my automatic thought is, what is this person's inner motive? Like, why are they being so nice to me? What are they really trying to get at? So definitely older males, just in general. My dad brought up a really good one the other day that I hadn't really thought about, but it's very true. Um, when older 
people are talking to little kids. So because mine was childhood sexual abuse, that's something that I definitely noticed. So when he said that, it made me think of, I was in Petco one time buying food for Colt. This little girl was like holding her dog. She had like a, a puppy. It was like a, what was it? A yellow lab. And this guy, I mean, he looked normal, looked very nice, just any normal guy but went up to her and was like really carrying on this conversation with her and like petting her dog and like kind of standing close to her. And I was just like, why are you doing that? Like, why does he feel the need to be having a conversation with this little girl? Like that doesn't make any sense. So things like that, I just am very weary about. Being alone in a room with someone obviously is a huge trigger for me just because when Larry was treating me, there was never anybody else in the room. The door was always shut. There were no windows. It was always just me and Larry. So. Definitely when I'm like in a room alone with somebody that I, I don't like that. Just in general, my back pain triggers me because my back pain is the reason why I was seeing Larry and why I was getting those treatments done. Whenever my back really starts to get fired up and I'm in pain, um, I always like think back to having to see Larry during that time. So that's just something that sits heavy on my mind as well when I'm dealing with what causes me to be... Um, not normal when my triggers hit. So so the next question in the my trigger section is, did you deal with body triggers or do you? Yes, I definitely still have flashbacks of when I was getting the treatments and it's very easy to remember that feeling and what it made me feel like and the pain that I felt. So I definitely do still get body triggers to this day. The next question is, did you find it hard to be in a relationship after everything you've been through? So I am doing a whole video on what it's like being in a serious relationship while having all of this go on because a lot of people are curious about that so I wanted to give it its own video so that will be coming in the future but the hardest part for me being in a serious relationship is the fact that I was being sexually abused while I was dating DJ so I don't really ever talk to DJ about this I don't really talk to anybody about it but just kind of having to swallow that thought is very hard because the fact that like I was being sexually assaulted while I was in a relationship with somebody whom I love and I have cared about for a very long time like I just that's just something that's very hard to um comprehend for me not even comprehend but just accept and I still I struggle that's one of the main things that I still really struggle with is the fact that I was seeing Larry at the time while I was dating DJ and still am dating DJ. So that is um, a very tough pill for me to swallow. How does hearing things in the media and hearing updates affect you? So this can go one of two ways, good or bad. When I hear good things in the media, I get excited, I feel relieved. So like when someone is charged with what we've been saying this whole time, like when Steve Penny was charged, when Kathy Glegas was charged, that's good stuff because that's people being held accountable. That makes me feel like all this fighting that we're doing is worth it. But then there's also bad things in the media. And this is, again, a reason why I deleted my Twitter. That frustrate me. They put me in a terrible mood. I'll get on a social media platform in the morning right when I wake up. And I'll look at something and it will upset me and it will ruin the rest of my day. Definitely the media has a huge effect on my mood and my healing process. So I really just need to take that into account when... I am on my path of healing. Um, the next question is, how often do you feel effects as a result of abuse and in what way? So my effects are very on and off. I've kind of already touched on this a little bit, but I have days where I feel like nothing can stop me. I'm motivated. I get so much done in a day. I clean, I do my homework, I film, I upload. Um, I go to the grocery store, I walk cold. Like I get all of these things done kind of to a point where I really feel like I'm not affected at all. Like I'm I'm like, oh, I'm good. Like, my healing process, like, A1, I'm healed. Like, I'm I'm great. But then I also have days where I wake up and it's like a completely different person has taken me over. It's like, I don't want to go to class. I don't want to get up. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to brush my hair. I don't want to put makeup on. I don't want to, like, I just don't want to do anything. I'm actually kind of starting to get in that point in my healing process where I'm realizing it's okay to not be okay. Because growing up in gymnastics, bad days weren't allowed. <laughs> Basically, like, they weren't validated. You weren't allowed to have bad days. It was no matter what, get your crap done. 
So now like when I have days that aren't as productive, I kind of let that sink into my self-worth a little bit because also growing up as a gymnast, you based your self-worth off of your accomplishments. So when you had a good meet or a good practice, you felt like a good person. But when you had a crappy day at practice and you, you had to stay after to get something done, it was like, crap, like I wasn't working hard enough, I'm lazy, which may have never been the case. It may have just been a bad day. Like you're human, you're not a robot, you're not gonna be perfect every day. So it's kind of nice, I'm in that point in the healing process finally two years later where I'm starting to feel okay with those days where I'm not okay. And I'm laying in bed and I just, now I can understand this is just one of those days. It's on and off, I'll have, like I've said, three great days, one terrible day. It's just very on and off. And the next question is, under my triggers, do you still find yourself getting anxious at times and how do you deal with it? Yes. I definitely get anxious a lot. Definitely just going anywhere alone makes me, makes me anxious. Grocery shopping, pumping my gas alone, even just being home alone. Like I always make sure the door's locked. Like I, I'm just always aware of what's going on around me and I, I just hate going anywhere alone. I don't like it because I don't feel like I can protect myself. So I always, like when I go grocery shopping, I'll have DJ go with me, even if it's just to pick up a, a paintbrush for something, something simple. Like I still make, I always ask DJ to go with me because you never know like who is watching you and especially like I'm five foot one, I weigh 115 pounds, like I'm not that big. I just feel like it's very easy for people to grab me and take me and I just don't like that thought. It makes me very anxious. So definitely going anywhere alone. How do I deal with that? You just have to remember that not everybody is bad. Like I'm always reminding myself like not everybody's Larry. Not everybody has those same intentions. So definitely just realizing that there are good people in the world and as hard as that is because you probably lack trust if you're a victim of abuse because that's what grooming is. You trust in someone and then they turn and betray you in literally the worst way possible. So I just, I don't have trust in people anymore at all. And I just, I really have to remind myself that not everybody's a Larry Nassar. So the next and last question in that section is, how do you deal with the thoughts that abusers put into your head? I just, you always have to remember that they are the ones that are mentally ill, not you. So there's no reason for you to even believe that anything that they say is true. And what I mean by that is they will probably say things that make you feel worthless, but they will also probably say things that make you feel great because they want to have that trust in you, but they also want to control you. Whatever they say has absolutely no validation because they are mentally ill. Like they're messed up in the head. Abu people who abuse are messed up. People who enable abuse are messed up. You just have to put it in your mind that you are a normal person. Like they are not. I always just have to remind myself that whatever they said about me is not true. Whatever they were saying, they probably didn't even believe. It was just a way to get me to trust them. So always reminding yourself that they are the ones that are messed up in the head, not you. So there's no reason for you to believe anything that they ever told you. So the next section we're gonna go into is anxiety, depression, and PTSD. I have quite a few questions on these. So the first one is, have you been to therapy and does it help you? Therapy has been hard for me. It's been very on and off. I have not consistently been going to therapy because growing up as a gymnast at Twistars, we weren't allowed to have feelings. We weren't allowed to complain about bad days. I've told you about that. We were treated like robots. Bad days weren't allowed. So the thought now going to talk to somebody for an hour and essentially talking about your feelings and what is going on and why you may be feeling this way or that way or a certain way just in general, um, it just doesn't sit well with me because I have the mentality of I don't need this. Like if I went through everything that I've been through as a club gymnast, I, I don't need to go to therapy. Like I'm stronger than this and like mentally I know I can get through this by myself. Abuse is not something that you are supposed to be able to get over by yourself because you are not supposed to be abused ever. Like humans are not made to be like, okay, I made her so she's gonna be sexually assaulted. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. So you aren't supposed to have to learn how to go through these things yourself and that's advice I need to take even myself is that therapist is great because they can provide you resources to help you heal and I would 110% recommend therapy. I am also just giving you advice that I really need to take myself. The next question is, how do you deal with depression? The only thing I can tell you about this is taking it one day at a time. Depression is something that makes you obviously feel like a completely different person. And it's not something where you can just wake up and be like, I'm gonna be happy today. No, because your brain chemically does not create 
what it needs to for you to be happy. On my bad days, when I really feel like I'm having a lower day than normal, I always really try to take in where I'm at in that moment and stay present because I think that it's important Important when you're in that present moment and you realize you're not okay, what can you do in that moment to help yourself? Not, oh, I can't wait for this to be over. I can't wait for a week from now and I don't feel like this anymore because then you're not going to be helping yourself in the moment. So I always just, I try to remind myself because I always have thoughts where how much easier would life be if I wasn't dealing with this? But you can't, you can't think about it like that because this is your life, this is your reality and all you can do is try to make good from it. I always, like I said, just try to stay in that moment no matter how bad I feel and just really try to think of something that is going to help me in that moment, if that makes any sense. The next question is, do you or any of the survivors struggle with pain attacks, PTSD, depression, or fear of men? I obviously can't speak on behalf of other survivors. I would assume that this is something along the lines of what they deal with because I think anybody that goes through a trauma deals with these things. But um, I haven't really talked about this much on any of my social media platforms. But in my, um, my personal case, I've been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, insomnia, um, on and off eating disorder, and OCD. So... I have not been diagnosed with PTSD, but I do have a lot of things that I am battling every single day. Eating disorder, just from the fact that I get stressed and I get tired, and when I am in those low modes, I don't want to eat, and so I don't, um, which is a big reason why I try, when I talk about like on my social media, to count my macros, at least during the week, so that way... I know what I'm eating during the day and I can kind of track my nutrients, but it's very, very hard on those harder days because you just, you don't, you don't feel good. Like you don't want to eat, you don't want to, I don't know. So that's just kind of what I deal with there. And then OCD, I just feel like things around, like what I can control, I overly control. So I'm like constantly cleaning my house. Everything is like organized to a T. When something is out of place, I, I have to fix it right away. I just, that's something I think that I can control in my life. And so that's why I, I am like that. I've always been like a neat person, but just never really to the extent that I am now. So those are definitely things that I really struggle with. And then the fear of men part, absolutely. I talked about this um, in the beginning of the video. I don't like Obviously, to just say all men are bad because they're not. There are great people in the world, but just because my abuser was an older man, that's just personally what triggers me. So the next question is, how do you get over PTSD and depression from abuse? I wish I had a straightforward answer with you and that one day you will wake up and that won't be an issue, but I personally think that once you are diagnosed with something like that, it is something that you are going to have to deal with for the rest of your life. Never... Do I think that it's every day is going to be the worst day of your life? It's going to be as bad as it once was when everything was first going on. I think you will continually heal, but I think those are always going to be things that will affect you. Kind of going off of that, time is huge. Time is something that allows you to heal. And sometimes time is the only thing that can allow you to heal. The, the longer of time that separates you from your last appointment or the last time you saw your boyfriend who was violent to you or anything like that the more time that separates you from that last moment is going to help you and I know it sucks because it can seem like time goes by really slow but I'm a firm believer in that the, the more amount of time that separates you from that last moment will help you heal and kind of like I said again remembering how to get over it remembering where you are in that moment right now in addressing what you can do to help yourself. So the next question is what triggers your anxiety and how do you cope? So like I said, going places alone, I make always make DJ go with me. I just feel safer and I know that he can protect me going anywhere at night. So the other night, actually, um, by my house, I was going to take Colt for a walk and I just had this like really strange situation come up where this guy started running at me and then I don't really know what his intentions were, but Colt jumped in front of me and he started growling and barking like he went into like protective mode and I've never seen him do that. And then once he saw Colt, the guy turned around and ran away and hid behind a dumpster. Just like I'm already weary about going places alone, being alone at night, going anywhere at night. And just like since that happened, that's been kind of heightened now. Definitely going anywhere at night. Nightmares really trigger my, my anxiety. Because I wake up and you're kind of in a state that you don't really know. Like when you first wake up and you really haven't come to yet. 
that's always something that stresses me out, causes anxiety because it's it's just something that feels real. Nightmares feel real. I always to cope with it and tips. Again, these may not work for you, but these are what have worked for me. Um, taking deep breaths, really trying to separate myself from the environment that's causing me to be anxious and trying to separate yourself from things that you know are going to cause anxiety. I will be the first one to admit, my friends have asked me to hang out and it's been at night and I, um, I've said no because I don't like going out at night. I just don't. Separating yourself from those environments I think is also very important. So just really being able again to address where you are in the moment and taking a deep breath and sitting back and saying, okay, what can I do right now in this moment to help myself? And the next topic and the last one we are going to be talking about is being in public and dealing with triggers. So the first question is, how do you deal with triggers when you're in a public setting? I always, when I am triggered in public, I try to find a quiet place, whether it's a bathroom or my car or just going into a separate room somewhere if you're in a building with a lot of rooms, whatever it may be. I always just try to separate myself from other people so that way I can just focus on me and what's going on with me in the moment. When you're by yourself, you're able to, again, address what you need and not worry about who's looking at you, who's around me, what do they think of me. You very much deserve time alone to chill and relax and get back to your normal level. And then another thing that I do when I'm in public and I feel like I'm getting anxious or anything like that, I always call my parents or I call my friends, anything like that just to be able to talk to someone about a totally different topic and take my mind off of whatever's going on or to address the topic that's going on so that way someone can console you and give you advice and be there for you. So either of those two things are what really help me when I'm in public. And the last question for this video is going to be when you are out in public, what are some things that trigger you and what do you do to help with it? I think the biggest thing when I was out in public that would trigger me is when I used to live at home in my house was in Larry's neighborhood and I would drive past his house. Obviously, as you can imagine, that's a huge trigger because that is where a lot of my abuse happened was down in his basement. That is something that is tough as well as, like I said, um, being around strangers in public when they come up and talk to me. Again, what do I do to help with that is just removing myself from that environment. So if I do end up having to go to a grocery store alone because DJ's at work late or whatever it may be, and I start to feel uncomfortable or I feel like someone is following me or anything like that, I leave, I get out of the environment, I go home where I feel safe, where I feel comfortable, where I'm around Colt and Milo and I just can be my normal self and where my level at the grocery store may have been up to like an eight or nine, I can get back down to like that normal four where I feel okay and I feel like I can breathe normal and I'm just myself. That is going to be part one of this video. I'm sorry, I know that was a lot of questions and this is going to be a long video, but like I said, this was one of the most requested videos and I wanted to make sure that I was hitting all of the topics that you guys wanted because this, I think, is going to be one of the most important videos that I do because, like I said, triggers are what cause people to not heal and it's what makes your healing path so up and down. So I hope that you guys liked this video. I will be posting the second video very soon, if not right after this one, because I don't want people to have to wait like I did with the going public as a sexual abuse survivor. So again, the next topics I'm going to be covering are dealing with the opinions of others and hearing triggering things that they say. That was a huge section of my questions that I got and then advice that I would give to you guys that I haven't already given. So I know this whole video was kind of just like what I do to help myself, but I do have a whole separate section for you guys on that. So that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this first part of this video. Be on the lookout for part two and please subscribe down below so you can see what videos are coming next and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye.